Exibus is a browser-based tactical RPG with pet collection and dress-up doll elements that hosted an open alpha test during February of last year. At the time, the developers had reached out to me and inquired as to whether or not I'd be interested in covering it for my channel. But unfortunately, seeing as I was still on my personal hiatus, I made a point not to check my email and bum myself out looking at messages about really promising up-and-coming projects I couldn't hope to engage with. Bright side is, Exibus is still kicking and in active development a full 12 months after its alpha's conclusion, aka right now. So better late than never. Seeing as the game is still technically in a phase of early development with the focus centering around making its framework as strong as possible, this isn't going to be a fully-fledged, extremely thorough and nitpicky sort of review. Instead, I'm just going to do my best to highlight what the game has to offer so far, the pros and cons that have immediately jumped out at me, and adjustments and additions I think would really flesh it out for the long term. First, let's take a look at its web design, UI, settings you can toggle on and off, stuff like that. In my opinion, it's simplistic in a very good way, really easy to parse and navigate, and all of the information you need upon signing in is readily available on the left side of the screen. An example, your energy bar's contents and which navigation icons are flashing pink. The flash means there's something of interest on the page be it an update or the results of whatever you set into motion last play session. There's also sound design built in, including music. That's some extra mile stuff. But if it isn't your kind of thing, there's an option to mute it. I do hope in the future that there's also an option to turn off the animation that's cycling in the background. And animated effects period. As pretty as they are, they could probably become a source of distraction or overstimulation for some players. Not to mention intensive on their CPU. Things can definitely get a bit stuttery on my work computer, as I'm sure you're noticing looking at my footage. Especially on pages with lots of interactables like the inventory and the daily gift schedule. Funnily enough, all areas of the site run a lot more smoothly on my phone. Must mean I'm due for an upgrade, huh? Though it has gotten a little better with the former as time has gone on. Dunno if that's because of optimizations made on the game's backend or computer care stuff I've done on mine. Either way, it's stunningly mobile device friendly. The navigation even snaps to match its orientation. I'd probably be playing this way all the time if I didn't need full screen recordings for this video. The core of Exibus's gameplay, as you might have figured based on its genre, is navigating different maps with your band of pets, all of which have different elemental typology, skills, and stats, and defeating the enemies scattered throughout. It's charming, and as involved as you want it to be. Reminds me a lot of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and some top-down MMOs I used to play back in the day. And like any good RPG in which you'll be doing a lot of grinding and revisiting, it doesn't only have an auto button that smartly directs your party for you, but it's also got a button that allows you to speed things up. Also, also, yes, another also, there's text indicators on the map selection screen that tell you whether or not there's still a unique item to be obtained from a map you've already cleared, so there's no dubiousness as to where you should be putting your energy. Great for people who only care about the pet collection, but obviously still gotta do the exploration anyway. Great for diffusing the fatigue of the grind. Great overall. And their quality of life features I honestly didn't expect to see in a game that's still in its foundational period. It's so cool of the Exibus team to get them in early. Definitely gives you an impression of where their priorities will lie in the future. There's also training, which are essentially idle quests that you accept and send your pets to fulfill. They've each got set requirements for acceptance, such as pets with a certain typology or a set number of pets. After the specified amount of time passes, your pals return from their beauty contest, bug extermination efforts, part-time work at a farm, whatever the flavor text said it was, and you might get some kind of reward in addition to experience points. I'm a huge fan of gameplay like this. It's a really effective way of making us players feel as if we're making progress even when we're away from the site. It provides a reason to want to soup up your pet collection with as much variety as you can, too. So, how do you collect pets? By summoning them. Through daily login gifts and standard gameplay, you accumulate crystals called lurite, 
or lorite shards, five of which can be combined to make a fully fledged lorite cluster. Take them to the summon page, click a button, and done. Your summon can yield a pet, or more likely, these little guys called wisps, which are used to enhance the elemental abilities of the pets you already have. A concern that cropped up in my mind pretty early on was, oh no. Are they going to make summon items a thing you can buy for premium currency? So, seeing as the devs were more than willing to get a dialogue going with me, I went ahead and asked them about their intent directly. I'm very happy to report that there are no such plans and never have been, even in the project's earliest stages. In their response to my email, the creators outright acknowledged the dangers of gambling and gambling addiction, and don't want a predatory system of that nature anywhere near their game, which is a huge weight off my conscience. I'd have felt awful if I hyped up Exibus only for it to turn into a premium gacha in 1.0, but that will not be the case. Anyway, back to the pets. There's a lot of information displayed on their pages, so it's wonderful that tabs are utilized for ease of digestion. In the first, you've got their stats, information on their special ability if they've got one, a bond progress bar, which will increase the more you explore with them, what their traits are, which can play a factor in the sorts of training they can participate in, a paragraph rich with information about their species, and a favorite button. I assume that'll come in handy when you've got a heck ton of pets and need a quick method of picking some out from the rest. Next is skills, active and passive. Active skills are the attacks you can utilize during each turn of battle, and passive skills are permanent or situational buffs that you typically unlock more of the higher you level your pet. The third tab accommodates for items. Up top, there's relics, which are equipables your pets will hand off to you once you've maxed out their bond bar. Below are consumables, like the wisps I was talking about earlier. You can also utilize these items by clicking on them directly from your inventory, but I find it a lot easier to use the pet page, personally. Helps keep me focused on what I'm doing. Lastly, my favorite, customization. Each pet's got a default color palette, but with an item called Chromacite, which you can obtain once per month through daily gifts, referrals, or two USD worth of premium currency, you can change it with sliders, so you don't gotta stick with one shade. If you like the way blue looks on a pet but wanna go lighter or darker, maybe with a little bit less saturation, you can. The full range of color options is one of the first things I scope out when I get a new pet. Makes me really excited to see which ones my friends will choose down the line, if any. Speaking of friends, I mentioned that there's a referral system, so you'd naturally assume there's a friending system too, right? Or some way to interact with other users on the site? Yes and yes. And there's incentive to do so. During your battles, you can opt to bring one of your friend's pets along for the ride. And both parties benefit from this, not only in the sense that you have a fourth pet on your side as opposed to the standard limit of three, but because at rollover, you'll gain a unique currency that you can't get anywhere else. Pure. Where do you spend pure? In the pure shop, of course. Currently, there's only three things you can buy. A winter-themed menu track, an outfit themed around the currency itself, and this adorable pet called a... Bopey? Boppy? Love that little rascal either way. But I'm sure the devs will consider adding more variety as time goes on. They might have considered it already. Either way, I dig the concept of pure and its obtainment. Last major topic, avatars. And I do mean avatars plural, as in, you can have more than one. Six, in fact. There doesn't seem to be too much clothing in the game at this very moment, but there are lots of eye, skin color, and hair options, so that's heartening. Gotta praise the facial hair department in particular. I have no idea why so many dress-up doll features and minigames are allergic to facial hair, but they are. So seeing it represented in so many ways on Exibus is a treat. I only wish that it wasn't gender-locked, and that the two base options weren't labeled as specific genders, because, frankly, some women have bodies like this, some men have bodies like this, and some people on the non-binary spectrum have bodies like both. Believe me, I know avatars don't need to be a one-to-one -one representation of the self. They can be an approximation or an entity all their own. And it's awesome that the game gives you the option to have multiple and change their male or female settings whenever you'd like. But rolling with the notion that some features are inherent to girls and others to boys is 
silly and reductive. Bottom line is, the avatars are lovely and have lots of personality and potential, so I hope the devs will consider making them even lovelier by adapting all features for both body variants, and removing the gendered language from their settings. Calling them Body Type 1 and Body Type 2 would be just fine. While they're at it, it would also be highly appreciated if they took dialogue like this out of their script. I mean this in the most constructive and supportive way possible. Genuinely, I do. But speaking as both a writer and a trans mask individual, my eyes rolled into the back of my head. So, hi Exibus's quest writer. No idea if you're hearing my voice directly or if someone will kindly volley this feedback in your general direction. But regardless, right now, I'm talking directly to you. Next time, when a high-pitched scream rings out within the confines of your scene, please just have a character exclaim, someone's in trouble, and leave it at that. That does the job of communicating that it could be anyone just fine. Saying it could be a woman or it could be a man with a high voice has the same energy of Animal Crossing New Leaf allowing you to wear gender non-conforming clothing, but feeling the need to comment on it every single time you do. Both instances scream, this is the norm for one gender, but I suppose there are some cases where it applies to another which I assure you is a skewed notion, not just because trans people, including those who are neither male nor female, exist, but because plenty of cisgender women have naturally low, husky, or gravelly voices, and those who don't, Maybe it's only seemingly. They could performatively speak with high voices in public settings because that's what they've been conditioned by society to do. I know I used to do that. And I listen to women in my family do it too. I'm going off on a tangent though. An important tangent, but a tangent nonetheless. My point. There is absolutely no need to gender things that don't need to be gendered. This can apply to body types and voices, the source of which we, the reader, aren't even familiar with in the moment that it's being described. It was a huge relief for me, after asking about it, to hear that the Exodus team has a black woman vet all of Deborah's dialogue, namely her use of AAVE. So in the future, seeing them bring on a couple of members of the trans community and or gender studies professionals to offer constructive commentary on how they're handling the topic of gender and gender stereotypes would be a really big relief too. Other than that big thing, I don't have too much else to say on the critique front, because, again, Exibus is still in its infancy. If it feels incomplete, that's because it is. But I will make a couple of broad observations that could be helpful to the game's development going forward. Or maybe they won't be. I might be touching on stuff that's already slated to be addressed and integrated. But you never know. So here I go anyway. Even though the system and its intricacies are engaging and fun, for me at least, there's very little satisfaction to be found in winning a battle. I think it might be because I so seldom receive any palpable rewards. And this isn't necessarily me saying the drop rate should be increased, though I'm not necessarily saying it shouldn't be. That could be something to reconsider in its own right. But more pressingly, I feel like there should be a guaranteed reward from each battle, and that guaranteed reward could take the form of a third currency for the game. Something common and abundant that you can spend on things like shards, clothing items, maybe even wisps. That could definitely help generate a sense of accomplishment and progress I'm not currently getting. In addition, the site generally gives me a lonely vibe, kind of like I'm stuck in a bubble. Being able to utilize your friend's pets in combat is really nice, but there's no way to interact with them otherwise or the user base at large. Heck, we can't even comment on news posts or check people's profiles. If this isn't the developer's preference and intent, I'd be very happy to hear that there are plans to integrate more ways for players to interact with one another across the site. Fostering a sense of community outside of a secondary application like Discord is really important. So, that's Exibus, a unique and quality in-progress browser game that I'm absolutely going to be keeping my eye on, because if this is what 0.9 looks like, then I can't wait for 1.0. Do your thing, Petsite community. Check it out. Give it your support. 
let me, and of course, the devs, know what you think. And use my referral link while you're at it. Help a guy get a cute little mouse with Ghibli energies. As always, thanks for watching. All relevant links are in the description below, including Exibus's social media accounts. And would you look at that, mine are down there too. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it in the future, feel free to hit the subscribe button on your way out. Thanks again, I'll see you soon.